Ah, uh, you gotta love people just complaining about the legendary drone spamming cabin. Oh no, it's the worst thing in Palace. How are we gonna do anything against this thing? Dude, you know how to defeat drones? Yeah, yeah. And you see these little two holes in your face, you know, right above your nose, right below your ears, that little thing right there. Use your eyes. That's all you have to do. And poof, they disappear in like exactly two seconds. It is not that hard. Either way, welcome back, everybody. If you couldn't tell based off the title, thumbnail, and maybe the contextual clue at the front of the video, uh, we're actually talking about the new legendary faction, the Hyperborea. <laughs> this is actually only the first part, though. There's going to be many more parts of it probably coming out in the near future. But it'd be nice to actually talk about it, see what the new parts they have to offer here, and see what the future potential holds for us in terms of balance. But again, this is all subject to change here, as they always like to disclaim here. In fact, they didn't even have the finalized like in-game renders done here. What you actually see here is just the super high res texture model that probably came straight out of like sculpting software. If they even attempted to import this file with this many polygons into Crossout, I'm pretty sure your potato PC would turn into a plate of french fries at this point. <laughs> Either way, new faction, Hyperborea. I think that's how you pronounce it anyway. I'm absolutely terrible with pronunciation. Either way, we got ourselves a nice legendary heavy cabin here. Now, honestly, love the aesthetics of this cabin. This thing looks B-E-A beautiful here. Love this nice, almost like spaceship-esque vibe here with the vents. The very nice, solid, like, latching door here. Extra tubes all over the place. That reminds me of, like, some very steampunk, almost-esque spaceship. Like, straight out of, like, something like Star Wars. I don't know. I definitely do appreciate it, though. But its size is approximately 8 by 6 by 5 so a fairly chunky boy, but nothing too bad here. Compare that to something like the... Let's do the Humpback, because the Humpback seems like it'd be the most appropriate, even though it's literally just, like a ginormous cube. So go over here to parameters if you actually ever want to check it out and just press F. But you can see we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then how tall is this bad boy? So we got one, two, three, four, five tall. And I account for the extra six at the bottom here that you can't really like connect anything to. So this bad boy, a little bit chunkier than the other one here, although you got some nice hiding places for fuel barrels and explosive bits. So, roughly similar to what you can expect with the new legendary cabin here. Although, interior of it as well, they have some nice little hiding spots here that they say are meant to be used for drone specific parts here. And the perk itself will allow the active and passive features passively. Yeah, you'll be able to set a target for any drone, turret, or quadcopter, which honestly is really kind of cool. Being able to actually focus fire your drones is going to be one of the major benefits of this alone. Because currently, drones automatically target whoever's closest to them or based on some priority features. I'm not quite sure how it works. But again, out of your control. Now, being able to control it, being able to actually focus the damage, being able to focus someone down, you'll actually be able to do a considerable amount just in general in terms of like actually killing somebody. Because spreading your damage equally between four or five targets is practically useless. Focusing someone down until they are destroyed, way more likely to actually be useful. Especially with the shorter lifespan that drones tend to have because, well, they're squishy. Beyond that, you also have the ability to activate a perk that then allows the drones to go rapid fire mode for a couple of seconds, increasing their damage quite considerably, but instantaneously killing them in the end. So in a way, it actually kind of incentivizes you to wait the drones out, let them do their damage, and then activate it right as the perk or the lifespan of the drones is about to end, so you can maximize the damage of the drones, and the destruction time and the natural timeout time for the drones is roughly equal. So that'll be interesting to try to see how you can actually balance out that. It's not going to be one of those things where it incentivizes you to immediately dump your payload. No, it's more like dump your payload, wait, activate the perk, and then you're good. Although I can't imagine you can activate the perk every single time you have drones up, but probably pretty close. But beyond that, still pretty cool and probably heavy cabin, so I'm guessing probably going to be roughly around the 11 power range. So next, we got ourselves a nice legendary light to generate to hit the Thor, which is kind of interesting. We're going for like a mixture between a Northern Men-esque, Diesel Punk-esque vibe here. Really kind of bringing like that faction almost into fruition here, which honestly, kind of love it. Kind of interesting though, that they make the super heavy faction also a like super light generator. Interesting. All right, cool. Kind of works with it. All the be fair. Maybe the same meant to be with the Diesel Punk, but still has that same vibe. Space Age vibe with the tubes, turbines, and nice rounded corners on everything. Either way, the nice thing about this cabin, though, they got a, quite a few interesting perks with this thing. So first off, still maintains the four energy, this Thor, of the like the Apollo. 
So it still adds four overall energy to your build, giving you to a maximum of 16. But an interesting thing is, is that it has bit different dimensions. So first off, it is five by four by two, which if you don't know, the Apollo here is a currently a six by six by two. So it is two shorter on one dimension and one shorter on the extra dimension while maintaining the same thickness. So it's gonna be considerably smaller than the actual existing Apollo engine. So overall, decreases in size actually translate to higher survivability and you can almost like kind of think of it as like its own durability addition in itself. Because you can get dodge overall more shots when you're smaller, you pretty much have a higher chance of survivability. I mean, that's why you can generally get away with having smaller ammo packs in your build, less armored than the heavier packs, because the heavier packs have a higher chance of getting hit by stray bullets, cannon fodder, getting pierced by scorpions, really the whole nine yards. But smaller ones, kind of hard to hit, kind of hard to find, plus you can sneak them into tighter spaces with but, uh, more armor. So in a way, the... Uh, following perk of reduction in durability actually may not be as bad as one might think, but with that, durability on this thing has actually been basically halved in this bad boy. So, if you don't know, currently, the Apollo has 363, so 363 divided by 2, just in case y'all don't believe me, we got ourselves 181.5 durability. In terms of mass, it has actually been reduced by three times, so it is a third of what it is, so we're down to 384 mass, which is, honestly really really light i'm actually what is the gas generator weigh here 144 so it's in that same neighborhood here but definitely not nearly as beefy as these bootstrap ones while still maintaining some pretty commendable durability here you know 181 durability may not seem a lot compared to something like the apollo but 181 is still able to resist a lot of shots and when you armor that bad boy up you're pretty much going to be safe for the majority of the fight really the only thing that's going to be able to easily pop it there's going to be things like flame bills that are going to make it a little bit more susceptible. But the huge reduction in mass is going to be fantastic for things like hovers, who are able to have just more general armor to begin with that you can get a lot more use out of. While generally, armoring up your generator is somewhat nice, what's really more important has that more general skirt armor that can protect your weapons and your build overall. That can provide a general protection as opposed to specific hyper protection towards a generator. So, really kind of cool. Beyond that, we also got ourselves brand new two structural parts. So we got ourselves a new massive made of only net which is this thing right here, which honestly looks really cool. I like the nice rounded edges of it. I assume it's going to also come with other parts that are also rounded themselves so that it kind of gives it a little bit more consistent theme because I guarantee this is supposed to be on the front of your car along with a snow plow here that looks like it almost sort of cl uh, clicks together in a way. So there definitely does need to be here that goes in front of this massive boy right here. This massive boy has that curved metal section there then latches up pretty nicely with this metal bonnet. So you have the snowplow, this metal bonnet, tie these two together, you probably get an overall general profile of what this vehicle is trying to go for. So very nice, and the snowplow itself is supposed to be a very heavy, durable part itself. And honestly, I kind of like it. Not really quite what I expected though for a snowplow s design. I kind of get that element with like this little curved, almost blade-like feature up here. But when I think of snowplow, I think of more like something like this, where it's a flat, almost like hemicircle pitched off to the side or maybe the double-bladed one for whatever reason. So why they went with that design? Not quite sure. Also, for some reason, it keeps showing up pictures of Jeremy Renner because apparently he got hit by a snowplow. So uh, there you go. You've been caught up on your news today for that. But yeah, that's all we have here for the nice little parts here. And of course, you can always go ahead and down on Reddit, leave your thoughts about it. It definitely does seem that the community is not a big fan of that nice, lovely, lovely heavy cabin. But the rest of it seems to be eh, fairly good for it. They all seem to be generally uh, interested somewhat, hard to say. So it's kind of hard to generate hype, especially when it's only like a couple of part images and a few little bit of flavor text. But yeah, at least they got that first spicy one out the way here. And honestly, I still would appreciate them actually sticking with that drone build. And there is not too many drone featured cabins. And on top of that too, it's not necessarily going to be like the ultimate drone spammer build because drones themselves not terribly, how should I say, good? <laughs> I mean, let's not beat around the bush here. They kind of suck right now. And if maybe I could say on consoles, it might be different. But on PC, which is where I play mostly, and that's where most of my experience is, they're not even remotely an issue. Anyone with a machine gun can instantly take them out. Anyone with a shotgun, instantly take them out. Even explosive parts, as long as you're with somebody, you're fine. And even someone who drives around the caucus build, and you're getting spammed by like three or four drones, not really that big of an issue either. Especially if you're using something like the oppressor engine to help with your turn speed, or if you're on like 
something that could easily turn around like ML 200s or Bigfoots or uh, the big ramps. Not really that much of an issue, but cool. Yeah, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Don't listen to these uh, <laughs> people complaining about it. Then honestly, I can see why a lot of people have this notion that <laughs> the American side across that is a bunch of whiners because even though this is just a thread dedicated to the brand new parts and the Hyborian faction or Hyborial faction, the people are keep complaining about like random stuff here. Like there's a random conversation about like fixing hovers in here all of a sudden. It's like, what? Is it not not uh, quite the location for this. There's an actual form page in which you could submit, you know, helpful little suggestions there if you want to be a bit more of a constructive person, but uh, agree to disagree. <laughs> But either way, what do you guys think about these nice Hyborian infection? Do you appreciate it? Do you dislike it? Do you think the pods are going to be interesting and quite fabulous? Let me know your thoughts down below. Beyond that, there's also a nice little gift here coming in the form of a customization kit of your choice. Now, as long as you log in across that before January 8th of 2023, you should be able to claim it quite easily. So right here, I'll actually show you it right now. You can see that actually when you log into the game, you only have about two days to actually collect it. So make sure you actually get it. So we got ourselves a surprise underneath the tree, which we got the second one earlier this year from, I think, the Christmas time event. But you can see yourselves the Cold Wave, the Vacuum, the Kaiza, the Viper, the Killer, and the Odin or 20 coins, which is this also 20 coins? Oh, it's actually a completely different surprise underneath the tree as well. So this one here, we got the CK Heat Wave, the CK Blizzard, the CK, I have no idea. Uh, CK Screamer, Empa, and then the Dragon, so the more Asian-themed uh, style weapons here. Although, eh, hard to really say because I don't really utilize a lot of these weapons, to be honest. But, eh, looks pretty good. Mostly looks like a nice kind of almost paint decal on them, which, honestly, I'm not quite a big fan of those that are just like paint decal CKs because you can kind of achieve the same effect by applying a bunch of stickers to your car. That pretty much does the exact same thing. So if I was to go with anything, I'd be going for more like these uh, Harvester ones because that actually changes the model a little bit, adds new elements, or, you know, changes actual appearance beyond something that looks like a sticker. So, hmm. Also, it could also just depend on what you're actually preferring in terms of, like, weapons that you utilize. So, there you go. Now you know what we get for the surprise underneath the trees. But beyond that, I think that's going to be pretty much everything I'm going to talk about here today. So I want to thank you all for joining us. Thank you. If you have fun, 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 it's your favorite. We got the YouTube, Twitch, or I guess Twitter and Discord down below. I was going to say Mixer, but that doesn't even exist anymore. Beyond that, guys, I want to thank you all. Uh, there will be a video available later on. Who knows? I need to get this bad boy up before I completely forget about it. <laughs> anyway, bye, guys.